Good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to today's, to today's session for your careers in healthcare festival. Today's session will cover manual handling, which is a requirement for patient and staff safety. My name is Alex Mitchell, and I'm a registered general nurse, and I'm now head of manual handling for NHS Tayside. I have a team of five manual handling practitioners. We are all professionally qualified nurses, and I have a training administrator as well. There are also approximately 200 local trainers within NHS Tayside working within the wards and the departments, keeping their uh, colleagues and their patients safe. NHS Tayside has approximately 13,000 staff. I started my career in nursing in 1987, actually 1985 as a uh, nursing auxiliary, and 1987 started my uh, nurse training. Uh, I worked initially in intensive care unit and accident emergency, and then basically medicine and care of the elderly. I became involved in teaching of safe manual handling in 1992, which is a legal requirement. As a local trainer, whilst I continued to work uh, within the wards clinically, I was a charge nurse until 1999, and then I moved into manual handling on a full time basis and built the service up to what it is today. Um, we provide training to all our own staff as well as external agencies, local authority, third party and private sector. And we also teach first and second year student nurses um, evidence based best practice manual handling. We also work across all the wards and departments, giving advice on complex handling issues uh, and helping staff doing risk assessments as well as writing policies, procedures and all associated training documentation. All of the NHS boards in Scotland work to the same standards, which is the Scottish Manual Handling Passport, first written in 2010 and then revised in 2014 to include local authorities and third sector uh, bodies. And this is the minimum standard of best practice in manual handling. I'm now going to share with you a manual handling skills video. Manual handling is a face to face session, but during the pandemic we had to build some resilience, so we created a skills video which is approximately 25 minutes long, um, but hopefully we'll have time at the end for a question and answer session. So I'm just going to share this with you now. Details the levels of training that staff are required to attend. This is to ensure that the training and education delivered within NHS Tayside complies with the Scottish Manual Got Handling now, Passport yep. 2014. Thank you. I hope you enjoy your manual handling skills video. Can you hear it? Yes. And why is it the skills video not? Right, next. The short tutorial is an overview of the core manual handling skills required when nursing adult patients. Chair work. Firstly, ascertain how much assistance the patient by asking them. The nurse must also undertake got that, an on the spot yes. assessment. Ask the patient to march on the spot and kick their legs out. By doing so, this also lets the nurse know that the patient not only has ability, but has understood instruction. The nurse can also adopt an open kneeling position, placing their hand on the patient's shins and thighs, then asking the patient to push against the nurse's hand. This allows the nurse to feel the strength the patient has in their legs in preparation to stand. Ask the patient to sit forward in the chair and hold onto the arms of the chair in readiness to stand. For the nurse to achieve a forward hold, nurse adopts an efficient posture using the principles of efficient movement. In close, stable base, soft knees, indirect hold to the shoulder and hip of the patient. The nurse prepares herself and the patient to stand by agreeing to a prompt, i.e. one, two, three, stand, or ready, steady, stand. In preparation to walk with the patient, the nurse holds her arm out, tucks her thumb in, thus creating a fist. Should the patient begin to fall, the nurse has a breakaway technique, allowing the nurse a free hand to assist the patient if required. When walking back to the chair, allow the patient to see the chair. Never walk a patient backward. Ensure the patient can feel the chair at the back of their legs and that they are holding onto the armrests. The nurse repositions herself into an efficient stance and asks the patient to stick their bottom out whilst the nurse assists the patient back into their chair. 
when the patient requires the assistance of two nurses, the nurses adopt an efficient posture by using the principles of efficient movement in close, stable base, soft knees, in direct hold to the shoulder and hip of the patient. The nurse with the shorter reach will put their arm around the patient first and the second nurse mirrors this. To achieve a combination hold, nurse one stands in front of the patient, adopts an efficient posture using the principles of efficient movement, in close, stable base, soft knees, indirect hold to the shoulder and the hip of the patient. The second nurse assumes the forward hold as identified earlier. This combination hold allows nurse one to achieve a free hand to further assist the patient. Hoisting onto a bed. When hoisting a patient, you will need a slide sheet and a full body sling. These are patient specific and are stored in the patient's locker whilst not in use. This is a tubular slide sheet used to facilitate the easy insertion of a full body sling and also acts as a second skin to protect the patient from any possible friction injury incurred by inserting the sling. To insert the slide sheet, ensure that your posture is efficient in close, stable base, soft knees, in direct hold. Glide the slide sheet down in between the patient's back and the chair until you reach just under the patient's bottom. Note, to insert the sling, nurses often remove the head and neck supports allowing for patient comfort. However, these must be reinserted prior to the hoist lift. Measure the sling against the patient from crown to coccyx, ensuring an optimum fit. Prior to sling insertion, the sling must be checked for the following. Check the clips for any white marks. This would indicate a crack. And check the stitching to ensure it's not been compromised. This type of sling should not be laundered and therefore must be discarded if wet or if the black do not wash label is missing. Check the manufacturer's label for hoist compatibility and safe working load, ensuring the patient's weight does not exceed this. Drape the sling on the back of the chair. Both nurses slip the sling between the chair and the slide sheet. Ensure the shoulder cups are aligned with the patient's shoulders. Remove the slide sheet by teasing it out. Always pull the slide sheet away from the patient by the seam at the back. This minimizes the risk of friction to the patient's skin. To apply the sling under the patient's legs, use a slide sheet. Starting at the patient's hip, bring the slide sheet down between the chair and the patient's leg, working the slide sheet under the knee, finishing on the top of the leg. Pass the leg strap under the slide sheet and pass it to your colleague. Remove the slide sheet by pulling it back on itself to reduce friction on the patient's skin. Repeat the process for the second leg. Prior to hoisting, reinsert the head and neck supports. Conduct hoist safety checks by 
firstly, checking the LOLER, or Lifting Operations and Lifting Equipment Regulations, 1998, is in date. Check the controls of the handset and the hoist are functioning correctly. Be familiar where to locate the emergency stop and the emergency down facility. Check the battery is adequately charged for the task. Check the safe working load, SWL, ensuring that your patient does not exceed this weight. On approaching the patient with the hoist, ensure that there are two nurses, one at either side of the hoist. Take the handset and begin to lower the cradle. Ask the patient to cross their arms to avoid entrapment. Using the handset, tilt the cradle toward the patient's legs. Always apply the leg clips first. Be sure the hoist clips are clicked and locked into position. Repeat this action for the shoulder clips, adjusting the cradle as required. Using the handset, begin to raise the patient until the hoist creates tension on the sling. Stop and double check that the clips remain in situ. Nurses maneuver the hoisted patient by standing at either side of the hoist to share the load efficiently. Ensure the hoist legs are closed when transferring. This enables the wheels to travel in one direction, thus minimizing swing. Prepare the receiving surface, in this case a profiling bed, by using the handset of the bed and provide a slide sheet to enable the patient's heels to glide into position. Align the patient's bottom between the angle gauges on the bed to achieve the optimum position, thus the patient gets full benefit of the profiling properties of the bed. Lower the patient. Remove the head and neck supports of the sling, loosen the clips of the hoist, starting at the shoulders, then the knee clips, and lastly, remove the slide sheet from under the patient's heels. Raise and remove the hoist, being careful not to come into contact with the patient. Raise the bed using the nurse's handset. Removal of the sling is achieved by pulling the sling back on itself, starting at the legs. Pass the leg of the sling through to your colleague by pushing it between the bed and the lumbar region of the patient. Nurse 2 will pull through the strap, being careful not to pull excessively as Nurse 1 is required to fold in the shoulder cup and clip area to avoid patient injury. Ask the patient to roll towards Nurse 1 and Nurse 2 can then remove the sling. Functions of the bed and bed work. 
to utilize the profiling properties of the bed in order to sit the patient more upright, use the Trendelenburg feature on the nurse's handset. You can lock any of these features out by pressing the padlock symbol, followed by the profiling features you wish to lock. This locks the patient's handset. To unlock, press the padlock symbol on the nurse's handset, then press the features you wish to unlock. This unlocks the patient handset. You can lock and unlock the bed rails by pulling the red safety side release, There is also located under the bed, accessory rails with an LED bulb on either side of the bed. These can be used to support urine bags and other drainage equipment. In an emergency situation where the patient is required to be supine, nurses can quickly flatten the profile bed promptly by pulling the CPR emergency release handle. Any further flattening of the bed can be done by pressing the CPR button on the nurse's handset. <sighs> For maneuvering the bed, when the lever is horizontal, all four casters can rotate and swivel. Green lever down means the steering caster is locked and therefore enables the handler to push the bed in a straight line. The red lever down, brakes are now applied to all four casters. There are bed accessories such as lifting pole sockets at head end and accessory sockets at the front end of the bed. When sliding a patient up and down the bed, a full length slide sheet is required. Begin by placing the slide sheet on top of the patient and working in unison. Begin to fold the slide sheet down toward the patient's feet. This fold should be the length of an average sized hand. Place the folded slide sheet under the patient's pillow. The hand furthest away from the patient anchors the top of the slide sheet, whilst the hand nearest the patient pulls the underside of the slide sheet. Both nurses working together continue to unfold the slide sheet. Should the slide sheet become stuck at the patient's lumbar region, simply ease the slide sheet back and forth and continue then to unfold until the slide sheet is under the patient's feet. Prior to sliding the patient up the bed, it is good practice to have a pillow at the head end of the bed. The nurses adopt an efficient posture by using the principles of efficient movement in close, stable base, soft knees, and an indirect hold of the top slide sheet. Once in position, nurses work together, i.e. ready, steady, slide. This process is repeated to slide the patient down the bed. Note, keeping your knuckles in contact with the surface of the bed avoids lifting and ensures efficient movement. Should the patient require to be positioned left or right lateral, firstly position the patient for the role as indicated. Nurse 1 should place her flat hands on the hip and shoulder of the patient. Nurse 2 pulls the slide sheet toward herself, initiating the roll to the lateral position. This is an ideal position for checking the patient's pressure areas. To remove the slide sheet, start near the feet of the patient, place your hand inside the tubular slide sheet and pull until you find a gap. Holding onto the seam, work your way to the patient's head where the tubular slide sheet naturally turns back on itself until the slide sheet is fully removed. Note, never bunch and pull a slide sheet out quickly as this can cause skin shearing to the patient. 
An ideal way to hold the patient onto their side is to use a towel. Firstly, fold the towel long ways and thereafter fold again twice as demonstrated here. Prepare the patient for the roll. It's important that both nurses share the load by pushing and pulling in unison. Align the towel at the patient's shoulder. Roll the patient back. Nurse 2 can unfold the towel under the patient's shoulder, which acts as an anchor. Both nurses push and pull to achieve a patient lateral position. The towel is then passed to Nurse 2, who is then able to hold the patient over with minimum effort and minimum strain. Note, if required to pull the patient's hips through further, the sheet can be used as demonstrated. For turning the patient on their opposite side, you would repeat the process. When applying the full body sling to a patient who is in bed, prepare the patient for the roll, using the push and pull method as demonstrated here. Take the sling and ensure the black label is facing the nurse. Secure the shoulder cup and flatten the sling against the patient's back. Lay the shoulder clip along the coloured piping of the sling and begin to roll it toward the patient. Roll the patient onto their opposite side, enabling the nurse to unroll the sling. If the sling appears uneven, simply roll the patient onto their side and make a fold in the sling. Both nurses pull their individual shoulder clips. This will rectify any unevenness. To remove the sling whilst patient is supine, fold the leg strap back on itself. Pass the leg of the sling through to your colleague by pushing it between the bed and lumbar region of the patient. Nurse two will then pull through the strap being careful not to pull excessively as nurse one is required to fold in the shoulder cup and clip area to avoid any patient injury. Assist the patient to roll using the push and pull method. Nurse two can then remove the sling. Lateral transfer. To carry out a lateral transfer, you must first remove the foot and head ends of the bed. The sheet that is under the patient will be used to facilitate the transfer, therefore the receiving surface should not require a sheet. Align the receiving surface next to the patient's bed. Other equipment required, transfer board and a full length slide sheet. Ensure brakes are applied to both surfaces. Nurses roll the patient towards them using the bed sheet. The transfer board is then placed evenly between the two surfaces and acts as a bridge. Place the full length slide sheet next to the patient and anchor it at the patient's shoulders, hips and heels. Roll the patient back onto the slide sheet. When three nurses are undertaking the lateral transfer, it is permissible to apply the safety rail on the bed. The nurses position themselves one at the head end of the patient, one at the foot end of the patient, and one nurse at the receiving surface. All nurses take hold of the bed sheet, 
keeping their knuckles in contact with the bed, working in unison to pull the patient over to the middle of the two surfaces, where there is a brief pause, enabling the nurses to reposition themselves efficiently before completing the lateral transfer. Note, the amount of staff required to conduct a lateral transfer is a minimum of three. However, other factors include patient's weight and its distribution and handler's individual capabilities. This list is not exhaustive. Bed cleaning and making. Prior to cleaning the bed, it is important to unplug the bed from the electricity supply. Note, ensure the bed is at optimum height to allow for mattress inspection, cleaning and turning. Clean the bed as instructed by your local infection control guidelines. Bed cleaning should be undertaken by two nurses. Nurses stand diagonally to the mattress holding one corner each. Lay the mattress next to the headboard exposing the bottom three platforms. Extend the bed using the integral bed extension button releasing the mattress platform. Both nurses clean the top and underside of the platform. Push the bed extension back into the bed frame. Repeat the removal cleaning and replacing process for the next two exposed mattress platforms and frame. Nurses at either end of the mattress flip the mattress to enable the clean side of the mattress to be in contact with the cleaned mattress platforms. The underside of the mattress, now uppermost, can be cleaned. Each nurse holds both corners of the ends of the mattress and begins the manoeuvre to return the mattress ready for use. Note, it is important that when making the bed, the nurses do not adopt a top-heavy posture, as this may lead to musculoskeletal injury. Apply the bottom sheet. However, when applying the top sheet, ensure the seams are not next to the patient's skin and facing outwards, leaving room for the patient's feet. Continue to make the bed and plug the bed back into the electricity supply. And always remember to apply the brakes. Hi there, John. Hi. Does, it, does anybody have any questions? Um, I'd just like to put that out to the schools that are here. Have any questions that you'd like to ask, Alex? Obviously, there's an awful lot more to manual handling and patient safety than any of us thought. <laughs> yeah. Can I just start off, Alex, by asking you a couple of questions? Is, is this something, I think you said at the start, that all, all NHS staff have to go through this, or is it particularly aimed at nursing staff? It's any patient-facing staff, so any 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 member of staff that might handle a patient um, and it's it's every two years um, obviously during the pandemic we struggled to do face-to-face -face training although we did manage to train 4,000 staff between March at the start of the pandemic and the, and the December plus 680 uh, first-year student nurses so we were still doing face-to-face -face training but the difficulty was staff getting away from the wards to get their updates so that's why we created the video yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the majority of patients actually are mobile and don't need to be hoisted and things like that. So it's it's more your very sick patients, um, patients that have maybe had strokes or things like that 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 have to be hoisted. Anybody that, that's completely immobile and 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 totally dependent. Um, also, during the pandemic, we we had to teach all the critical care staff, um, theatre staff, all the medics, to how to prone a patient, which is go from their back onto their tummy, 
um, because the ventilated patients that had COVID had to be placed on the front to get their oxygen saturations up. Um, so that was quite a significant piece of work that, that we undertook as well, um, just to support our, our critical care colleagues because patients were having to be turned every every 30 minutes, basically, um, whilst, whilst ventilated and that kind of thing. Um, so most patients don't need hoisted, but but mm. but some do, um, and, and you know it involves machinery, and um, you know every year there is fatalities of patients falling from hoist, um, and it's it's never mechanical failure; it's user error. So mm. that's why it's so important, you know, that we 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 do rigorous training with the staff. Yeah, and can I just ask you personally? I know you mentioned you went through your. Uh, career at the start, but moving into this area, did, is this a, a conscious decision to move into training in this sort of sector or was it one of these accidental, fortuitous things that happened to people? It, it just evolved. I mean, I was, yeah. I was a charge nurse working clinically and um, the manual handling operations regulations came in in 1992. I mean, at, at the start of my career, you know, as a 17 year old nursing auxiliary, if a 16 stone man needed a bath, it was a manual lift into the bath. Um, and we manually lifted our patients to get them up the bed for their breakfast. At that time, it wasn't the, we didn't have electrically profiling beds. They just yeah. had a backrest and we had to manually lift them using our backs. Um, so I was quite passionate about it. And to begin with, it, it, I mean, it was it was a drip, drip, drip because nurses didn't like approaching patients with machines. Mm. Um, so I wanted to get all my staff safe. So I started just working locally with my team um, training them on the equipment and then I started to do more wards and departments and then the opportunity came up for a, a manual handling advisor for NHS Tayside so there was just me for at that time an organisation of nearly 16,000 staff you know we're 3,000 less than that since 1999 um, but that wasn't enough so I've since built, built the team um, and I then went on to, t I, d I did a master's degree in human biomechanics and ergonomics. Um, so looking at the wider workplace um, and d undertaking risk assessments and, uh, you know, just keeping staff s safe. Um, a lot of staff that have been, in, I mean, I've NHS Tayside for 38 years um, and, you know, have back issues because mm. of the, f the first part of my career of for manually lifting patients and um, it's it's unthinkable now because y y if a patient actually couldn't move themselves you would just would never not use a hoist or slide sheets and that kind of thing so yeah. yes it's kind of kind of evolved um, and I still do work clinically I go into the wards and departments and and help the staff assess very complex patients um, we have a lot a lot more bariatric patients, which are patients in excess of 25 stones. Um, and it always creates a bit of an issue for staff. So we generally go on site and, and just support them with different equipment um, to enable them to safely move those patients. Um, yeah. I, th I think our heaviest patient was 52 stone. Gee. Um, so that was a challenge. Bit. OK, well, Alex, I'd like to thank you very much for your presentation. Um, we're going to, I'm going to stop the recording shortly and uh, end the meeting, but uh, if MD from the school has any other questions, please uh, let me know and I can pass them on to Alex. But in the meantime, Alex, thanks very much. OK, you're um, welcome. And uh, really appreciate your input today. Thank you. Thank you. OK, bye.